four. The fourth fear that we will talk about is fear that we're not doing enough. We took a survey in our office and asked them, I said, I'd like to know some things that people would really like to hear teaching on. So I said, what would be some of the main things you would like to hear teaching on? This was a few years back that we did this. And very interesting, I mean, there was a lot of interesting things, but the one thing that more people said than other things was, I want to know when I'm doing enough. And I thought that was really interesting. When am I praying enough? When am I reading enough scripture? When am I doing enough good works? When am I doing enough? I'm afraid I'm not doing enough. Do any of you go through that? I was thinking, or you have this vague fear. Or you have this little devil that sits on your shoulders. Well, what are you going to do? 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 And it throws us into a works of the flesh mode. You know, you need to pray till you're done. Don't pray by the clock. Don't let somebody come to your church or watch somebody on TV that gives you their testimony of how they pray five hours every morning and then you go try to do that because they do that. You're going to be one bored, miserable, unhappy person. I tried that once. I announced to my family, I'm going to start praying four hours every day. We'd had an intercessor come to our church, and man, she had the power of God all over her. And I thought, whoo, whoo glory to God, I want that. <laughs> well, the only problem was she was anointed to do that, and I wasn't. I prayed about everything I knew how to pray about two or three times and looked at my clock and five minutes had gone by. <laughs> well, I wasn't about to come out of the room, so I laid on the floor and took a nap. <laughs> and you know, then you wake up every once in a while, oh, Lord, I love you, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I mean, it took me years to get over this, and finally God said, will you stop counting everything you do? So you don't have to fear that you're not doing enough. You're not doing enough. And not only that, you'll never do enough. Jesus did enough. He did enough. So we do what we're led by the Spirit to do. We do what we're anointed to do. And we don't compare ourselves with other people. Because God anoints different people in different ways. I don't need to count everything I do. I actually think that's offensive to God. You know why? Because you feel good about yourself if you do a lot. And you feel bad about yourself if you don't. <laughs> now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having goals. You know, if you want to set a goal, I'm going to pray 30 minutes every day. That's fine. But don't pray in the flesh. Don't sit there and make yourself try to come up with something when you set everything that you need. I mean, if you set everything you need to and you want to do 30 minutes, then just sit there in God's presence and just say, Here I am, God, the biggest mess in the universe. Help me. <laughs> Come on, God wants honest communication, not a bunch of religious nonsense. Jesus didn't die so we could all have a religion. He died so we could have an intimate, personal, friendly relationship with Him. Number five, the fear of being taken advantage of. Woo! I still deal with that one a little bit. God tells us to be humble and meek, but we're usually afraid that if we take that attitude, people are going to walk all over us. We're afraid that they're going to take advantage of us. 1 Peter 5, 6 says, Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that in due time He may exalt you. Meekness is not weakness, but it's strength under control. I always had the attitude, You're not going to talk to me like that. You're not going to treat me like that. I didn't know how to wait on God to be my vindicator. I wanted to make sure that I took up for myself because I'd been mistreated in my life and I just kind of made a promise to myself, nobody's going to push me around again. You know, when you make those kind of inner vows, sometimes you have a hard time in relationships. 
You got to be careful of this kind of thinking. I'm afraid to trust people. You can't trust anyone. That's totally not true. But I will tell you this. You don't have to be afraid of people trying to take advantage of you. Some will. You don't have to be afraid of it at all. Someone will try from time to time. But God is your vindicator and he'll deal with those who try to misuse you. God will deal with it. You can't isolate yourself and refuse to be involved with anybody because you're afraid of being hurt. Love hurts. You can't love and never have pain. If you open yourself up to love, you're going to have some pain. But you give pain too. Mm -hmm. Hello. Thank you for your encouragement. 2 Timothy 4.14 I want you to turn some things over to God tonight. Just turn them over to God. Alexander the coppersmith did me great wrongs, Paul said. The Lord will pay him back for his actions. <laughs> Man, I like that attitude. Boy, this guy really took advantage of me and mistreated me. You know, God spoke to my husband years ago and said something that's helped us in many situations in our life. He said, nobody can steal from you if you've got your trust in me. Because whatever they take from you, if you're a person of integrity, whatever they take from you, if I have to funnel it through a thousand people, I'll take it away from them and get it back to you. I want to encourage you to start doing that. People can't steal from you if you won't have that attitude. You can just say, God, they can't steal from me because you're going to take it away from them and get it back to me one way or the other. You're in charge of my vindication. You'll pay me back. Otherwise, you're going around mad all the time because people are not treating you right. And the first thing that comes up in your mind, my mind too, is you just can't trust anybody. That's it. I'm not ever trusting anybody again. And the second thing I say is wrong. I'm not going to do that because it's not fair to put that off on other people. There are good people. There are great people, wonderful people who do keep their word that you can trust. Number six. The fear of involvement. <laughs> you know, being involved with people is often messy. <laughs> And even disappointing. It's work to be involved with people. It means working through issues that come up due to our differences and our flaws. And sometimes it just becomes so much work we just feel like we'd rather not mess with it. Thank you, I'll just do it myself. It means confrontation and we would, most of us would rather not do that. We don't want to confront issues. We don't like to delegate things to other people so we work ourselves to death and we get burnout and then we end up murmuring, grumbling and complaining because all we do is work all the time. And we won't delegate anything to anybody else because we don't want to have to put up with their weaknesses. They might not do it like we do it. Because after all, we're the only ones that can do anything right. And I'm sure some of you have been saying that. I can't do all of this anymore. <laughs> Has anybody been saying that? I cannot do all of this anymore. There are seasons in our lives. And we're supposed to turn things over to the next generation. Well, you can't give people responsibility if you don't give them authority. And as soon as you give them authority, then that means you've got to back off and stay out of some stuff. Everybody's not like you. Everybody's not going to do everything the way you do it, but you can either go crazy or you can get some help. Come on now, I'm preaching better than you're acting. 
And everybody in your family, all your friends, the people that depend on you, they may be used to you doing everything and they're going to say, well, you know, I need you to do it. Nobody does it like you. You know, a lot of times we like that. Well, everybody comes to me. Everybody comes to me. It makes me feel good when everybody comes to me. I believe that God surrounds every person with the people that they need to help them do what God's called them to do. Now, I believe that. And I can tell you, all the stuff that's going on through our ministry, I mean, to be honest with you, other than the preaching and the writing and the teaching and the praying, I have very little to do with any of it. Because God sent me people that could do the part that I couldn't do, but you've got to let them do it. And even in a family unit, God gives you what you need in that family unit. Some of you ladies are running everything, and you could just... Give your husband some of the stuff, but if you do, then you got to give him some authority with it. And... Well, I just have to do all the work around here. Well, we don't have time for all that, do we? <laughs> How many of you are glad I don't have time to go there? You know, we want our husbands to be the spiritual head of the household till they become one and want to start taking some authority. Oh, just go back to your recliner. <laughs> Lay back and watch a little more TV. I thought I wanted you to pay the bills, but now that you're telling me what I can and can't spend, I'll take it back, thank you. <laughs> Whew, I tell you, this is so much fun tonight, I can't hardly stand it. <laughs> Do you know what happens to people when God puts somebody, say, in a church or in a corporation that he's gifted for certain things and nobody uses them? They get disgruntled and unhappy and they begin to murmur and complain and find fault with everything because God didn't create us for boredom. There's nothing worse than sitting back having to watch somebody try to do something that they're not nearly as good at as you are but they won't let you do it for fear that you might steal a little bit of their thunder or not do something exactly the way they would. You don't need to be afraid of getting hurt if you get involved. You will. Well, you didn't like that much. <laughs> but you will survive. And you will grow. And you will learn. And you will recover. And you will have some help. You know, if you've been tormented by fear or held back from doing the things that you really want to do because of fear, I have good news for you today. Fear does not have to rule in your life anymore. You can face it head on. You can conquer it and find freedom to be able to do what God has called you to do. You can do it afraid.